Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm very excited to showcase the latest features in Blender 3.5 hair grooming. If you ever struggled with creating realistic hair or fur in your 3D models, then you're going to love this new feature and workflow. With this workflow and grooming, you're gonna have more control than ever before over the individual hairs in your models, allowing you to create stunning lifelike results in less time without having to use complicated geometry nodes or spending a lot of time in the frustrating grooming editor. So let me walk you through everything you need to know about this exciting new feature and workflow. Grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and let's dive in. Okay, so let's get started now, shall we? First I'm going to subdivide this cube to give myself more geometry to work with. Shade smooth. And apply the modifier. Now, all I'm going to do to add my particle hair is Shift A, Curve, Fur. And for this tutorial, I'm going to stay within the modifier stack. I'm not going to use any geometry, and I will try to use as little uh, hair modifying such as sculpting and grooming as possible, so I can make it as easily accessible to beginners and show you how powerful this new system is. So the first modifier that we're going to take a look at is the set hair curve profile. This one controls each and every single hair curve. For example, let me show you what happens when I control the radius. And I think it would be a better demonstration if I go to EV, settings, go to curves, set it to strip, look, it's, all, it's already changing. Give it an additional subdivision of two times. Let me go back here. This changes the radius of the curves on which my hair particles are going to emanate from. I'm going to keep it at 0 0.0015. As for the shape, it clumps the hair curve and it shows you where it ends. And I think it's better for me to demonstrate it for you. When I give it a positive value, it's going to be thinner at the end. Let's see what happens when I give it a negative value. The exact opposite. Now it doesn't look like something where hair would emanate from, but it looks like vines perhaps. Anyway, I'm going to keep it at a positive value of 0 0.75. And what's very cool about this is that Blender already added the surface as the cube and the surface UV map that we're going to use. Now, let me show you what happens when I up the density. I'm going to have to up it a lot. Give it 50,000. Yes, this is what this node does. It creates individual hairs between the curves. Think of it as the interpolate system uh, and the children system and the old particle system but in a node format. This way it's easier to be accessed and it's easier to be modified as well. But I'm not going to use 50,000 in this tutorial while I'm recording. So to make it easier for me and to make it more accessible, I'm gonna set the density to 0 0.25. This is what's going to be showed during the tutorial. Okay. Hair curve noise and frizz hair curves do the same thing. Like they have the same function. Uh, what they do basically is they give randomization to the hair to give it a more realistic look. And that's dependent on the factor. Let's see what happens when I lower the factor. The amount of noise that's emanating is lowered. And the seed is basically the randomization vector. And when I press preserve length, my hair is going to be randomized, but it will keep the same length that it was at the beginning. So the hair curve noise and the frizz hair curves have the same thing. They add randomization and variation to the hair. Let me preserve the length on both of them. And the last important one that I'm going to speak about is the surface deform. The basic function of this hair node, it basically allows the hair particles to follow around the curves of the object that I have it on. And this would work well if I used shape keys, for example. This is the basic function of this modifier. So how would I use it? 
For example, if I would like to uh, duplicate a part of my character's head and make the backside head, I would certainly need to have the surface deform modified at the bottom of the stack at all times so I can modify my hair and keep the shape of it. But so far this hasn't been very interesting. Let me show you where this new hair grooming system really shines. I'm going to go into my viewport shading and I'm going to give my hair particles a material. Let me make sure I'm using the hair. I'm going to use a node principled hair BSDF and it only works in cycles. So I'm going to switch cycles and make sure I'm using my GPU. Okay, good. So what I want to do is now I want to add another screen and use the asset browser and here is what I want to show you. This is where it gets really interesting. Let's nerd out together. It used to be very difficult to add deformations to the hair. This basically replaces the need for you to go into the grooming system. As these. Uh, look for example, this one has the trim hair curve, which basically, if I put it above my interpolate, sorry, it has to be under the interpolate, because I want to change the density or the length of the hair after the interpolate, what it basically does is changes the length after I already changed the hair. Now you can slowly see what the point of this new hair system is, part of, basically. Remember when we used to have the particle system and we cannot change the length of the hair after we set the amount of hairs that we had? This replaces this problem. Now I can just go in here and change how much hair I want on my character. But again, it's still not that impressive. Let me see what else it could do, other than the trim. Uh, basically, all the brush uh, functions that were accessible before, they're accessible here, but in the form of geometry nodes and in the form of modifiers. Let me see, the most interesting one for me so far was uh, the straighten hair curve, the shrink wrap as well. I'm going to put the shrink wrap underneath the trim. Wait, I need to put it on the hair system. Then when it's in the modifier stack, it has to be always above the surface deform and under the trim. has to be above anything that's related to given modifications to the hair and it has to be underneath anything that gives length to the hair you understand what I mean yeah now let me see what surface I wanted to shrink wrap to the circle for example and this is already giving me ideas for example you can use this to modify uh, fur on a furry animal character perhaps even a bushy beard or some eyebrows and if I miss with the distance, it misses with how much I want it to be wrapped around the mesh that I selected. So this is going to be a very useful tool moving forward. But I'm not going to use it right now. And the curve noise and the hair fuzz, we all have frizz, sorry, we already discussed those. The displacement basically moving the hair particles without having to use the brush this is the use that i found for it personally let me put it here again i'm going to put it above no, underneath the interpolate oh, this is annoying sorry underneath interpolate and trim above the hair curve noise its basic function is to move the hair particles towards a certain vector See? This is what we usually did with brushes, but now we can easily do it with more control in a modifier stack. And now, even though I'm not going to go into detail into geometry nodes in this uh, tutorial or showcase more uh, to be accurate, um, this is enough for me to give my stylized character a very awesome 
the hairstyle without having to use a single brush so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try my best not to use any brushes and to style my character's hair only using the tools that I have inside the assets here and the generation is basically straightforward let's see what happens when we use the duplicate it, it does in exactly what the interpolate hair does but less effectively or uh, less efficiently let's say it's more expensive to use and yeah it basically increases the amount of hair that you have on your character let's see what happens when I put it underneath the interpolate it basically duplicated the amount of hair it's in the name guys and blender is it almost crashed that was lucky so yeah we don't need it okay now this is what I've been waiting to show you the guides let me up the interpolated hair amount I'm going to put it at 0 0.75 and now that I have the trim I'm going to up the length factor to 0 0.5 Good. Let me show you what happens when I used a braided hair curve, for example. Not in a million years would I have been able to do this in the old hair system this fast. But now let's not delay any further what I really wanted to show you in this tutorial. How to model or how to stylize your character's hair in the new Blender 3.5 system. So let us get straight into it. And now, without even touching a single brush, this is what I was able to come up with. Considering that I did not even touch a single geometry node, this is a fantastic result that I can build up on and improve upon. This is exactly what I was going for, except for a few things that I can adjust with the hair clumping. But it's very easy. Let me show you my modifier stack. First of all, I put my set curve profile, and this came with the original hair fur curve. Then I did some curl hair curves, and here are my settings. After which I did some smoothing of the hair so it would go down easily. Of course, some clumping. I would like to improve upon that. I'm not sure how I can do that with geometry nodes, but I'm gonna experiment with it even further some rotation of the hair and of course I did not touch a single brush because of these two nodes the rotate hair curves and the displace hair curves I was able to place the hair exactly how I wanted it simply with these two uh, geometry nodes sorry simply with these two modifiers and here are my displacement vectors and I set the object space to the plane that I extruded sorry I duplicated from my original mesh. After which, this is the interpolated hair curves. We we used it in the previous example. Same thing with the displacement. There was some displacement that I used, I remember. And the interpolate, it has to be there to give you this uh, fullness, so to speak. And I didn't need to use a density over 12,000 to get this result. I think I can even lower it down a bit, maybe do something like this yeah, this is even this is good and I can mess around with the hair length and here's how I can mess, here's how I can mix around with it uh, the length factor I can give him a bit longer hair I can shorten his hair And this is not a destructive process. I mean, this is all just modifier stacks. After which I give him some hair curve noise, and it actually comes with it, the frizz hair curves and the hair curve noise for some variation. And the surface deform always has to be at the bottom of your modifier stack. And to see how it looks like in cycles, with the symbol hair, uh, principled hair BSDF, I think I can achieve better results with even proper lighting, but I did the simple 
three lighting method three point lighting method sorry and I'm quite satisfied with this result and I'm going to build on it even further in the future and if you enjoyed this demonstration be sure to leave a comment like subscribe and tell me what else you would like to see in the future and if you're interested in this type of style of characters um, I actually have a Udemy course on how you can make this character from scratch and I'm planning on uh, putting the new hair system in my tutorial in the future so if you're interested in that maybe even I would leave a free tutorial for you to see my style in detail I would love to hear what you guys think and thank you for watching